first of all, happy new Italian Prime Minister Day. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you picked it correctly. You're this the one that actually... This is a momentous day. Now, I can't give you too much grief because the American political system gives the Italian political system a run for its money in terms of being an absolute circus. And as you know, I have two passports, one U.S. and one Italian. So you're, you're checking all the boxes. Uh, well, so uh, two years ago now, uh, then Prime Minister months. Renzi, uh, so two prime ministers ago, you know, you, you had worked at Amazon for 16 years, and, and he made you an offer you couldn't refuse. Uh, but why? Why go from, you know, one of the most, if not the most successful companies in the world uh, back to your native country to go help fix the government? Uh, the straight answer is because I couldn't refuse the offer to go help my country. It's a, it was a fantastic opportunity, in my opinion, to put at work what you've learned, you know, working at Apple, working at Amazon for so many years, managing large, complex systems. Governments are very large, very complex systems, and usually are managed by people that have no idea how to manage large and complex systems. So, um, when Matteo Renzi told me, you know, we want to <laughs> clearly invest in transforming the government, he had this very clear idea that, especially now, uh, even the private sector cannot be competitive or can be way more competitive if the government of their country is very efficient. And it's, uh, and it's, uh, it, it's going to be more and more like that. It's not just enough to be tax friendly and all those things. I mean, governments need to really make the life of citizens and, and companies much easier. And this is even more true now in this very competitive environment. You told me a, a great story a couple of years ago uh, when you were at Apple. This is probably uh, the year 2000. And you told your boss then, Steve Jobs. End of 99. Yeah, that you were going to Amazon. He said, why would you go to a retailer? He said, you must be so stupid. It's a good thing you're leaving the company. Correct. <laughs> when he, he, was, uh, he saw that I had made my mind up. Right. He started so, offending me. So when you told your new boss, Jeff Bezos, uh, your boss of 16 years, that you, were, you wanted to take some time off to go, to, to go home and uh, join the government. Well, what did Jeff say? He actually was very, very proud. He's, uh, he's, uh, he, he, we've been working together for such a long time. And uh, he, the idea that some of his you know, executives, people that helped to, to build the company, or at least had a very small uh, impact on building a company with him, doing something that he himself defined noble, and it was actually made him really, really pride, proud. And, and we should say in your 16 years at Amazon, you ran the, the, the retail business, you ran the international the business. The international business. I started yeah, when Amazon had done just a little book site in the UK and in Germany. That right. was the only two foreign right. websites. So what was it like going from one of the fastest moving uh, companies in the world to the, to the sludge of public service? Um, first of all, I was prepared. It's it funny does, it because doesn't look like it's aged you that much, uh, no. at least as much as it should. I, though I have built a lot. People that work with me have been working with me before. They think I have become way more patient, which is something that I was not expecting to be. Usually people, when they get older, they get less patient. But um, I found it a little bit what I expected um, in terms of uh, you know what you think about government. By the way, the conversation here is to be what, what governments are in general, because digital transformation and government digital transformation, it's, it's a lot about government as a complex system. Then obviously the Italian government and Italian politics and the Italian social environment adds a little peculiarity to that. It, it is not, and I want known to sure that we distinguish. it's not known for its dynamism. Uh, is that fair? Although, true, but you know the reason why I accepted it is because I thought that Matteo Renzi at that time was representing the the, real, the willingness to change, that, that's why I accept. That was the only reason. There were, that was num condition number one. And condition number two uh, was, uh, and that happened after one hour meeting with the, the existing legacy, the existing digital agency, I accept, but the only condition is I want to build my own small right. team. And you, you and put together it. like an Italian Avengers of computer oh, yeah, yeah, science. Actually we can, uh, right, you we can show that the, slide. The missionaries, so you brought, you brought a couple of slides. Yes. Uh, are these, so, the, are these the, uh, the missionaries? Yes, those are the missionaries. Those okay. are actually, we are with a, in a meeting with the Ministry of Economic Development. I started by myself. And uh, the reason why I'm commissioner, because commissioner from the Italian legislative system has the possibility for special reasons to hire from the outside. And indeed, my first communication, which was a post on media and I was supported by interviews by, by newspapers, was 
the, the job descriptions of the people that I needed. That was my first communication. In fact, here we have you know, data scientists, we have computer scientists, we have engineers, uh, we have one lawyer and uh, out of 30 people, and I'm just, it's the opposite ratio that you see in governments. In governments, they're all lawyers and all political scientists and, and, and very little uh, engineers, technical people. I mean, there are a couple of economists. I'm personally graduate in economics by, by definition. So, but what is the point is that systems cannot be changed from inside, is that it, you come to an immediate realization that when you have to do um, transformation, which a lot of times means also pushing hard, you cannot ask the systems to transform themselves. So this is why with Renzi we agree that let's build a small task force, operational task force, it's not just uh, uh, strategic, we, we actually do, do things, and, uh, and, uh, and, and try to impact this way. And the things we've been able to do in 18 months are phenomenal, we'll also it. because we found also a lot of government agencies and departments actually following us, which was, a step, it was amazing for me. Well, you wrote a, a couple of a very elegant uh, blog posts on Medium when you did join the Italian government. And one of the things you said that just caught my eye, we have to start writing fewer laws and more software, or fewer codes and more code. What did Correct. you mean by that? Well, uh, here I probably need to add one piece which is typical of the Italian government. Uh, don't, don't, don't remember the right numbers, but we have way more lawyers in the only city, just in the city of Rome, than in the whole of France. And we have, uh, I think, 20x the number of laws in, in, uh, in, uh, in similar situations, like in France itself. Uh, for, for reasons that I'm not here to discuss, in Italy there is pretty much a law for everything. What is the big issue? I mean, Italy has the code for digital government. Think about it, right? It's like to regulate an abstract, um, massive thing, and there are like 112 articles, very difficult interpretation, very difficult execution. People don't really know what that means, safe, except a few cases. So the point is, uh, for example, one of the things we did, and this is, you, you really want to listen to this, in many digital transformation activities, like we are now we're centralizing the National Register, it's all decentralized, uh, or at least making more synchronous than it used to be, the de technical details of how to do that were built in the law. Think about it, right? Technical details in the law. And Which laws is ridiculous. Are pretty hard to change. And, and when technology, technology changes every day. Changes every day, and mistakes may, you know, they do exist. So one of the things we've been doing in uh, updating this law is to taking away all the technical details and putting them into guidelines. In fact, we build a three-year plan. We put everything on, on, on open source. Uh, and we can look so, at Diego's second uh, yes, slide. One of the things here, we, one, that's I think one of the biggest successes, is a new way to develop, design, communicate, and collaborate because that's, 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 that's the point. I mean, the, such a lack of tools. And it's, uh, so we have actually nearly one of the most modern laws on open source and software reuse. But nobody was using it because there was no tools, no expertise no competence to do it. So we put everything on, uh, on uh, and we insist on open source, we have read the docs, so we have a forum where now it's very trafficked with the, with the administrations, with the technical people in the administrations. Uh, we created the designer's website, we created the developer's website. And We're a new consumer app, which you just launched. We launched a new consumer app uh, uh, in a very beta testing activity because we need to obviously integrate. We're building the uh, catalog of APIs we're unifying ontology. Now, this is the app. We, we, we announced it yesterday, and this should be the way for the administration. We're going to experiment this with 17 administration and three, 4,000 citizens in, in that area for the normal relationship between citizen and government. Communication, back and forth, transaction, payments, receiving payments, making payments, your preferences, uh, and those are going to be as simple as they are. Most of the software we start working on, it was not mobile friendly, just to give you an idea. And, and that's one of the activities we've been building together, working with the private sector, and that's uh, if, if that's we were If we were at Amazon, uh, somebody would ask to see the numbers, right, the metrics. So well, how do you measure your success? How that's, far did you get? That's, uh, that's uh, very interesting, because one of the things we built, which is uh, um, uh, exactly within this team, is a dashboard. We built on all the projects that we're managing directly, a dashboard with the you know, daily advance and specific outputs, inputs. And for example, one of the biggest programs we're launching is the Digital Unified 
um, identity. We are now adding roughly 40,000 identities every, every week. Uh, we are adding uh, seven or eight departments that integrate identity. So on our website, you see all those. And the interesting thing, why am I getting this, is was getting the data. So going to the departments, although you have all this open data myth that are very jealous of the data, and they say, oh, we're going we're gonna to send you manually with an email the data every week. I said, no, just expose the APIs. We're going to get the data, and we're going to publish them. So that's, that's why you know, I saw there before cultural change. We really, you have to get into changing the mentality of uh, people that have been doing things the same way with very, very, with a large lack of leadership in, in determining Well, that was my next change. question. Like you, you know, the second part of your term has been marked by some, uh, some kind of crazy political instability. So did that uh, hinder your progress? No, I mean, the, the, the successor to Matteo Renzi was uh, uh, Paolo Gentiloni coming from the same political area, but also he was Minister of Telecommunications. He was one of the most advanced in terms of understanding the use of technology. So actually we went uh, very far. Uh, from the very beginning, by the way, with Matteo, I always said digital transformation has no political color. Anybody would be crazy not doing this. And, uh, and, it, and this, by the way, this is gonna take years. It's gonna take five, 10, 15 well, years to well, get there, all of those pieces together. Will, uh, do you think the new prime minister will appoint a successor to you? Um, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, uh, my mandate expires 15th of September. There's still many things. The prime minister can decide to renew the activity of my team or decide to do it another way. If he it's, doesn't, would you consider it to be, you know, the, the mission to be unfulfilled? Uh, we, we, we built a document, very comprehensive document of all the things we've done and all the things that are left to do. Uh, with very clear suggestion in terms of choices, governance, changes, and this uh, the new prime minister will decide whether this is interesting or not. Uh, I'm sure that they want to do it. Might be they want to do it in a different way. I mean, that's one of the things I've learned in politics that you never know about what happens next week. Right. We, we've we've talked a lot over the last two days about the European startup ecosystem. Uh, we have some data from the Bloomberg Terminal about investments in Italian startups. What have you observed over the last two years about the uh, you know the, the level of energy that exists mm -hmm. uh, in Italy around around the internet around. Uh, you know, new digital technologies. I mean, there's a little bit of an uptick there, yeah. but I think comparatively, it's probably at somewhat of a disadvantage to other European countries like France See, one and of, One of the things that I was, uh, I've been away from Italy for 19 years, 17 years, going back and forth, but I haven't lived in Italy. You kept your football Italy. affiliations, I would imagine. Talking about football in the, in the yes, <laughs> but in the year where Italy is not going to the World Cup. Oh, I'm sorry to bring topic. up a sword. Like, I did not know that. Don't, I did don't. not do that research. Apparently. Even the choice of the color of the bars, come on, it makes you just think about it. Uh, <laughs> the uh, one I saw positive surprises and negative surprises when I came back is that the positive surprise, which in one sort though, it's, it's also, um, you need to think, think about it for the future. Milan is a different world. It, it's like, seriously, I mean, I saw a renewed Milan with an incredibly um, lively ecosystem in terms of, by the way, you see those data? I mean, I bet 95% of those Milan. are enlarged in yeah. that one city. Yeah. And, uh, and I saw a very modern city. I saw a city that has uh, revitalized a lot of areas, rebuilt, and by the way, four different administrations all of them of two different colors. And it just continued, the center right, continue what the center left then, and then the center right, and then the center left again. But there's, there's one thing that is very typical of the Italian government, at least the central government. Whomever wins the election, never wins. It never happened the following elections. Never, it never happened. It's cyclical. It's a pendulum that goes back and forth. And, uh, and, uh, and therefore, uh, not only the startup system, but also the confirmation that a very healthy administration, a very modern government can help the ecosystem. I mean, Milan in December reached the milestone of more than 50% of uh, uh, government relations with citizens were done online. And most of the certificates were done online. Sounds like trivial probably for governments that have been doing this for many, many years, but it's a milestone for that. And it's a very, very good signal in terms of 
where where the country so some wants re to be. reasons for the things to be worried is that I see one part of the country and by the way it's not just Milan but all the surrounding area most of the northern part and on the rest uh, you see still that country that really struggles can't keep up uh, you look at the employment data you look at the digitalization data and it's two different countries right right. Um, so now that you spent some time on the inside in, in government, you know, Amazon, your, your former slash perhaps still current employer, uh, has a tremendously successful business in Europe, but, uh, you know, has had some friction uh, with Brussels, particularly uh, the competition commissioner. Uh, what do you convey to your, to your colleagues in, in Seattle about working with government? Mm -hmm. It's funny that... Uh, I've been able not to talk about Amazon for 18 well, months. Well, we're, we're, we're going to have to break that uh, uninterrupted boom, streak comes. in our last, no. in our remaining but time. By the way, just to be clear with everybody, I'm on a leave of absence right. from Amazon. Every Are you going back in September? Uh, September is so far away. It's uh, actually it's not that government. far away. Yeah, it's, it's a couple, really, it's really, oh, it's, it's a couple of away. weeks away. Uh, I can launch another five uh, technology programs at the government in the meanwhile. So yeah. that's a maybe, <laughs> is that like a likely? I'm not talking, not even with a gun to my head on that one. Okay. So it's a possibility. He's not saying no. <laughs> okay, like but in terms of working with, with government, so what I do you bring that, back? That, uh, um, and this is just not Amazon. This is, uh, uh, I think, uh, corporations that now have such an impact on social life of people, and, and it's just not the usual names. You can mention it. I, I think what we're going to see is a, a new kind of, uh, let's call it social contract with governments. Uh, it, how long is that going to take? I don't know. How is it going to shape? I don't really know. But I think there's going to be a different responsibilities in terms of larger corporations helping governments to become more efficient. It's going to be a virtuous cycle. Well, Jeff is doing a great job with the, with the U.S. president in terms of that social contract right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I do think that uh, there, is a, there is room for changing the, the level of relationship. And now you see all the situations you call. Usually, if you get called to government, it's because you have to right. justify something, get, right? Right, or you're apologizing for something. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I do hope you, we, we, we can build. And I think it's going to start at the local level first, at the local administrative levels, because usually our, the local administrations are the ones that do more modern things. They have also smarter people. They also have people that are come from the management versus just pure politicians. And I think that large cities will, will start cooperating with those companies in a different way than in the past. There, there's a conversation that seems to be dominating right now in the United States around whether our tech companies are too big. And I want to ask a poll question here, if you guys have the, have the mobile app up, uh, and, and perhaps an unfair one for you. But the, the poll question is, is Amazon too big? And I guess you know my version of the, of the question for you is like, you know, if you're an enormously successful tech company, you know, what do you do when all the questions that you start to get from government are going to be these kinds of skeptical ones? Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't really know what too big means. How do you define too big? I, I think it's about, you know, it's understanding what a company does. The, the, the market that it's in. The, the, the many markets that the company is, market segments that the company is in. The activities, how it behaves, uh, what it does, and the geographies. I mean, uh, this is one of the things that answering at the abstract level, I think not only is dangerous, but it's also unhelpful. Right. Well, abstractly, a majority, well, 42% uh, of the respondents say yes, but that's a, that's a divided vote. Let me ask you this, because you have now observed lots of different kinds of leadership. You've worked with some of the mm -hmm. most brilliant you know, leaders of our time. Talk a little bit about Jeff uh, and working with him for 16 years, um, because you know, clearly Amazon just now is on a, a remarkable run. You know, what, I think people want to know. I, you know. I hear it all the time. What do you attribute uh, you know, his versatility and the, uh, the amazing run of success that Amazon has been on? I, I, I think that my, the best way for me to answer is what I have uh, brought to my new job that I've learned from Jeff Style. And, and I think that, uh, uh, for example, I brought a lot of the operational activity that I've learned in Amazon with Jeff. The, 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 you know, now everybody knows about the story of the six pagers. So believe it or not. You're doing six I pagers have, oh yeah, in the Italian government? I'm absolutely yeah. doing six pagers in the Italian government. Which it helps you and helps you. I mean, when we define that app. Oh, you should saw, explain. Oh, sorry, yeah. the six pager is, uh, uh, it's pretty much is writing documents versus PowerPoints when you are in meetings where you need to make the actual business decisions. 
And, uh, and it starts with a press release that helps you to position the product with consumer. And for that app that you saw, we, we started. started from the app. Governments, they define what citizens need, starting from a law and moving upward. And we, we try to reverse that. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated in government. Everything is for obvious reason. So we started defining. I mean, we, by the way, we are all citizens. So we also know what the user experience is. So we started by defining uh, the app with the press release. The day we announce it, what are we going to announce? What are we going to explain? And build it backward. We built a ton of FAQs in terms of trying to defining what the question they're going to be asking, what is the question for the administration, for the citizens, and write in a document, which usually says six pager because it's not too long, it's not too short, and it helps you with that. It's a good, it's a good magic number. And, uh, and define the program that way. And the same thing we did when, when we had to relook at the digital identity and, uh, and, uh, and building it. And the funny thing is that actually I've seen some other departments using it. Wow. Which makes me really, really think that uh, a few things might be changing in that direction. So that's one. So the attention to starting from the customer and looking backward every time and bringing this to government. Can you imagine that? I mean, looking at governments, really thinking about needs of citizens when they design laws, that would be phenomenal. I would imagine, though, that the, that the, uh, the culture of the, of the six-page narrative needs a sponsor. And so, you know, is the Italian government, is it receptive to it? Can, can, that, you know, can that continue to exist when you're gone? I don't know. Uh, seriously, I mean, I, I don't really know. What I else? Mean, I, I yeah. say, this is the new boss, and, uh, and we'll find out. Uh, what else? It's the, it's the um, that's one of the things I've learned really from Jeff from the very beginning, is the level of uh, integrity and integrity within the relation. I mean, Amazon is a very large corporation. I mean, 49% of the people think it's too big. Too large, yes. Uh, but at least within our uh, imagine, um, level, the level of politics is so low, and the level of BS is so low that um, it starts from the top. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons of success. Now, bring a no politics thing <laughs> in the government, politics, yeah. it's a kind of oxymoron. But uh, I'm teaching my team, right? Things like basic, basic things, like when you want to speak about someone else and you want to write and you want your boss to know it, BCC people, it's a no, no. Uh. And so it's, uh, it's, it's adding transparency. It's very, very being very direct with people. I mean, being very direct with people in politics. It's so really what you're important. saying is, in terms of so Jeff's genius, it's the, it's the cultural values Yeah, I'm not and talking the about techniques. the genius part because yeah. everybody knows about yeah. that. I'm telling you about the, the, the cultural values and the human values that he brings to people around him. Mm -hmm. And to me, transpose, learning those first, uh, I mean, in the last year, oldest letter, he wrote something that is in front of our eyes every time, but it, the, way, the way he said it was very clear. You can learn high standards. If you work in an environment where there is high standards, you learn high standards. The opposite is true. If you work in an environment when there is just low standards, everybody gets into the low standards level. And that's the issue most of the times with governments. I mean, it's, it's learned helplessness, and it's learned uh, average. Everything has to be an average, and it's a mediocre average. And, and we need to revert that. But that brings me to one thing that I really want to make sure that is, uh, is uh, understood and thought through. I'm hoping to, to build a sustainable model within the Italian government. I mean, we're leaving processes, we're leaving uh, um, systems that we built from scratch, but I'm hoping that someone else coming from the private world, like me, says, well, I want to, me and those 30 people and others, spending two, three years in the government makes sense because it's a great help to my country and it was a great helping lesson for me. I mean, it was an amazing learning lesson. <clears throat> but the important thing is that there are sustainable models and, pro and repeatable processes that can be used. At that point, if you had asked me, do you want to work for a government for the rest of your life? The answer would have probably been no. If you want to say, hey, why don't you work on this specific project? You have the tools, you have the budget, you have the processes, running for three years. 
I think we can invent something for a new way of doing governments in Quick the future. Quick concluding question. And pretend no one's here. This is, this is between us. <laughs> no Do you here. leave your, your time in public service more or less optimistic about the process of democratic governance and its ability to keep up with this fast changing world? That is a loaded world. question. <clears throat> in, in 10 seconds or less, if you could, because we are wildly I, I, out of time. I live with the awareness of the fact that governments cannot regulate technology, artificial intelligence, everything without building inside competence. It is the biggest issue that today we have with the government. So if governments address that, which is building skills, or, or also knowing how to use the skills from the outside, I'm very, very optimistic. But that needs to be fixed. Diego Piacentini, thank you for joining us. Thank you.